What's up guys, DGFX here, and class is in progress. So, today we'll be going back into After Effects, render out our footage, we just pre-comped and selected and everything like that, and we're going to be bringing it to PF Track to do some match moving. If you don't know what match move is, it's motion tracking guys. Alright, simple, you learned this in preschool, or whatever school, we're, we're, we're in high school right now, so you learn this in middle school, so let's go into more of the advanced stage and learn you some new programs, it, it doesn't hurt, so let's get this started. So let's go back into our editor school project, if it wants to open, <laughs> and go to scene 1, our 3D scene, and open up your After Effects project, I already did, and we're going to go to our main comp, where we have all of our, you know, pre-composed footage is all ready to be rendered out into external programs. So we're going to hit control shift backslash if you're on a Mac command shift backslash and it'll bring up the rendering thing if not just make sure you have the composition selected go to composition and add to render queue. There you go. Simple as that. So now we'll be going into PF track. PF track for motion track tracking program and you don't really need a JPEG sequence for it. So let's go to output module, let's do our format to H.264, format options, profile, main level, we're gonna do the 5.1, we're gonna use CBR, and we're gonna go about eh, 60 megabytes per second. Then hit OK. Audio output's not needed because we're just going into tracking program, hit OK. Output 2, and this is where we're gonna select our thing. Our um, output module, and we know make sure we're going to our project, editor school, scene one, and then we're going to name it track, track um, guide. Then hit enter and render that bitch. And while we wait for that, um, we are going to go to our PF track. We're gonna open that motherfucker up. Oh shit, yep. Teacher just cursed. Expel. Ah, <sighs> pixel form. Okay, don't know why it's not doing that. But anyway, so we're gonna go once we open up. Um, wants to delete. Once we open up PF track, it's gonna look something like this. To freeze up on me. Alright, well, first of all, we need to create a new project. So click down project and then, you know, our path, that's where we want to save it at. So desktop or whatever you saved your file at, I don't really care. I won't, I shouldn't even notice. And let's name the directory. Directory is where the folder you want. So let's just choose that folder and a name, let's call it tracking data. Alright. The frame rate we want 60 frames a second. 60 frames a second. Um, then just hit confirm. All right, and there you go. Should look something like this. So now you need to import your footage, and PF Track looks extremely hard to input footage, but it's really not at all. So we should have stuff like this up here. Uh, these. Now this one is your. Where it shows like all your footage, like your you know footage once you import it, and this will be your uh, tree editor, which I will talk to you about that. Then you'll have your media box, media media bin, and your um, media browser. Which, yeah. <laughs> so, what you want to do is I'm gonna show you a trick real quick now. You're gonna hit Alt Tab and go to your desktop. Just because PF Track doesn't really have a minimized window and everything. And now you're gonna find, open up Editor School, Scene One or wherever you put it at, and you want to find the gateway to your track guide, track folder. Of properties, details. Where's that? Object name right there. Up. Oh. oh. Disregard all that. Let's just go do the old way. So you should have your. You should see some number C. You should just see C unless you have multiple hard drives. I have C, D, E, G, and H, which I have four hard drives and a uh, external 
<sighs> an external uh, CD drive. <sighs> All right. So let's go to C drive. That's your Windows drive. You should see all this. And if you don't really good with finding your folder, uh, mine's on my desktop. So I'm gonna go to users. Then I'm gonna go to Nick, which is me, my desktop. Then I should see my folder to editor school. Open that up. Then I should see two more folders, scene one or whatever's in there. Then I should see right there my track guide. And let's just bring this to right there. That is my, uh, which I call it, my immediate bin. And I'm gonna drag it right there. There we go. You have imported your footage. And now you should see this is your tree view. This is going to show you all of your work. Um, footage you have and all your little effects and now here's another thing that's probably gonna scare you guys but I didn't want to tell you to after I didn't want to scare you out of meeting not meeting watching a great little lesson in PF track it is node base node base is uh, I'll show you guys how it's it's kind of hard to explain what a node base program is it runs off of nodes um, let's just show you an example so we have a track got in right here and there's no as you see there's no like effects click when your magic bullet looks and drag it on there no like you move this thing around like all you want however you want not really it's no big deal so we're gonna right click on it and let's do a user track as you see it drops down and we can move this however we want we can add other tracks or data and stuff like that in the middle of this it's not that hard uh, sorry about that <laughs> so as we click on our user track we should have all this stuff down here in our parameters. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I know it's all stuffy in it. Yeah, it's kind of aggravating, probably for you guys. So we're gonna create a user track. User track is just gonna you is basically we're gonna um give the tracking program the auto track an idea of what we're trying to track. So it knows, hey, they're trying to track right there. So let's put some points right there. Let's get some good tracks. That they're tracking good. But we can put some better tracks right here and give them what they want. That's basically what the program's saying when it goes back and auto tracks this. So let's go down and hit create. And let's go and if you click on, you hold down your mouse wheel and drag to left to right. You can zoom in and out. Um, so let's just put one right there, uh, one right there, one right there. And now this is just for our lights. So we have a track point for our lights. Um, Oh, shoot. There we go. Alright. Oh, this one's covered in. We're going to put basically where we want our guys at. So we can put one right there. Create. One right there. Right there. And there we go. That looks pretty good. This has been aggravating. Okay. And make sure you don't move it. I just did, don't be an idiot. Scroll back to frame I was on. Why did I move it? Okay, looks good right there. All right, so I'm gonna select all of our tracks now. I'm just hitting shift and drag up. And we're gonna hit this button right here. In fact, you know what, we did actually did an error. <laughs> um, make sure <laughs> all your track points you created, you want first frame. Or you're gonna have to delete them all, like I'd have to do. Um, so when it tracks through, it don't skip the first frame. So let's do our three lights. Then right there and right there. I want to go back to this one, and I need to uh, move it around. So let's bring it right there. Okay. So I'm gonna select them all like that, and we're gonna hit this bottom arrow right here with the two arrows. And this is going to track all the points. So let's click it. And as you see, it is tracking. As you see, these two aren't really the best. These lights really have a good track point to get onto, unlike the ones in the middle. So that's what I was saying. These, the programs we use these two more of as like, hey, let's put some right here. These we actually might be able to use as correct tracks. And I will pause the tutorial while we wait. What's up guys, we came back to our tutorial, 
Um, as you see, we have all of our stuff tracked and ready to go. Um, now, what we gotta do is we need to start adding stuff like auto track and everything like that. More tracks, because I mean, you know, this really ain't the best. So, after under user track, we're gonna click on it, click right, and click auto track. So, now what we can do is go back to user track, and we wanna select all these tracks. Okay, now we're gonna go and click on export. And let's just go to your, you know, your project file, your desktop, there's scene one. And let's just name this file name trackers. Click save. Now we go back to the auto track. And let's click import and cl open up trackers. <laughs> so pretty much what we did was we went into the user track, we copied all those, and pasted them into auto track. So now these are in the auto track folder. I just see they're blue, they're different. I just see they really aren't the best tracks. But with the auto track, it's going to use them as reference points. So we can click on auto track. I'm going to click re extend. And that's it. And it's going to start tracking. And I'm going to come back to you after all these tracks are finished. And we're going to finish up. Get back to it. Alright, guys. All of our projects I mean our trackers have been tracked and everything now we need to camera solve camera solve uh, oh damn some bad tracks happened as you see camera solve basically comes there and finalizes the tracks to get you some really high quality tracks and everything um follow this let's right click and let's go to camera solve and now we're gonna have this. This is your grid and everything. This is where we're gonna. We're not gonna really worry about this right now. Um, so let's just start looking around here. As you see, we have current clip, current group, set in this for frames automatically. Show blah blah. blah um, translation none none. That's pretty much all of that right there. Trackers, restraints, errors. There's really nothing really you know you really need to mess with here just make sure yep there's really nothing to mess with so what you're gonna do is hit solve all and I'm gonna come back to you after mine are finished solving alright guys all my tracks have been solved and everything so now they're all perfect and set up and ready for the real world that's what you wanna call them <laughs> But now we're gonna come there, click on this, and we're gonna go to Orient Scene. Here's where we're gonna set up our scene and everything, and set up this right here. So as you see, it's a little, you know, movie and everything, and it's not, you know, it's not perfectly set up yet. So what we can do is we can say click on a track like that, and set origin, and there you go. It automatically tracks the whole scene. Perfect. So that's just a little tip and why I personally love PF track. So I just see that looks pretty good. Um, in fact, let's actually click on this little track right here and look right there, set origin. And that actually came out a lot better. So after we have that set, we're going to go right here under the edit mode and let's do translate. Let's just move it a little bit to the right and a little bit down to Z. Let's see how that looks. Still looks really good. Uh, let's do a little bit of rotation to get it look a little bit better to, you know, the floor. Reset that. Let's go back to translate. Um, let's try this point right here. Come on, let me click on you. Alright, 
This is really acting up and aggravating. There we go. Set origin. Let me see how that looks. That looks pretty good. So let's do a little bit of rotation to it. And a little bit to the right like that. There you go, that looks pretty good right there. As you say, agree it's well aligned. And the track's really not coming off too well. The scale is a little messed up, as you see, it's, it's a scale up really quick, which ain't too good at all. But anyway, that looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do is right click on orientate scene, and we're going to go over to export. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, export. <laughs> Here's our last final settings and everything like that. So look, our scale, that's how big the grid's gonna be. So let's let's bring that to one. I can't really tell you exactly how that works, but I'm showing you right there. Alright, now we're gonna export this scene to two programs. So we wanna export it to After Effects and after Effects and 3ds Max. So our first format thing right here, we're gonna choose After Effects. Ma, and also if you have a uh, Maya, you can use it. Which Maya? It's another 3D program. And you know we're gonna check our stuff, make sure it's all set in our folder. Editor School Scene One, and let's just search. Save it as Track Guides. Save. Export. There we go. Or let me click it again for show all trackers. Okay. Now we're gonna, now we're gonna change it again. Let's change it to 3ds Max. Um, 3ds Max 2011 script. And let's click export scene. Okay. You're done. You're done with all the track guide tracking and everything like that. The scene is ready to add all the visual effects and creativity and all that. Magical Wonderland. Let's click Alt Tab. Let's go. No, actually, we can just straight up close out this. Yes. And there you go, guys. This is an 18 minute tutorial on match moving in PF Track. <laughs> um, this should show you everything you need to know. And that's it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Students, Clash has is a class. It's dismissed. I'm DJFX. See you guys.